This podcast contains explicit content, language, and sexual situations. It is intended for adults 18 years of age and older. These thoughts and opinions expressed are not those of any specific employer, group, or individual. Fed up with the rat race, we decided to sell everything and move to Cancun, Mexico. Now we do what we love. Work, party, and play in the middle of paradise. After 18 years in the lifestyle, we thought we saw it all, but we were so wrong. So wrong. Oh my God, so wrong. Now we want to share the fun that we get to have every day. So come to room 77. Let's play. Okay, tell me when you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready. You ready? I am now. Right, we started. We, we got a lot of stuff. There's too much stuff in this one. <laughs> we have to push a lot of it over to Patreon because there's just too much stuff going on. <laughs> Yeah, there really is. But first, hurricane update 2020. Dun, 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 dun. Going to Richard live in the studio. Hi, Lauren. I'm out here and it's sunny. Oh, I just said you're in the studio. Yes, it's oh. sunny. It was my fault. I meant you're on location. Tell us, Richard. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is sunny. The uh, hurricane has passed. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, for your thought-provoking and such fully detailed. You're very welcome. So I just want to give everybody an update in case you haven't found out already. We're okay. We lived through, I think they said, the worst hurricane in the history of, of hurricanes, yeah. really. Yeah, it was a very scary experience for the two of us, mostly me. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you the short version because, <laughs> spoiler alert, we're not dead. <laughs> Uh, what happened was we were sitting here on our other uncomfortable sofa. I think it was a Monday night or a Sunday night. I can't remember. And I had texted my friend, Anthony, mm-hmm. the owner of La Serena. I was like, hey, Anthony. This is obviously in text. Yeah. But this is how I sound like when I'm texting him. Hey, Anthony, what do you think about living in Spain? Because this is usually something that I would say to him. Yeah. And he texts back, dude, we're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> And then my phone starts ringing. I'm like, what is going on? What, what, what? He's like, have you not looked at the news? Have you not looked? I'm like, no, I haven't. I was watching the boys on Amazon. Come on. Yeah, I was watching the boys and you're interrupting this really good storyline. Yeah. Uh, he's like, no, check it out. There's a hurricane coming our way. I was like, oh, okay. So I did that. And then over the next couple of days, not even a couple of days, we had like 24 hours notice. <laughs> that was it. The night was before. It. And then it came the next night. Yeah. Or- and this thing is just growing. It's just getting huge. It's, yeah. it's like, uh, I want to make a Ghostbuster reference, but I don't know why. <laughs> but it's just getting big. It's just getting big and out of control. Girthy, yeah. I'm just picturing. Oh, you're going. <laughs> sex- Come on, Richard. All right. It's a sex podcast. So, so, uh, so yeah, so it goes from category two to a three to a four. Then it was flirting with a five, yeah. six, then maybe a seven. It touched a seven, category seven. Yeah. So we spent the next day shopping. That night, I had reached out to B and I was like, B, listen, you may want to sleep here tomorrow night. And this is how she texts <laughs> back. Why would I do that? <laughs> Uh, because there's a hurricane coming and y- you're pretty close to the to the water. Uh, yeah. You're like on the coast. We're like almost a mile in. You may want to sleep here. No, I'll just use the time to read. <laughs> no, I'm stay here. I'm just going to read by candlelight. <laughs> I'm like, okay, suit yourself. B's going to die. Yeah. I wake up the next morning and it's a bunch of texts from her. Can I sleep in your house tonight? <laughs> So we're like, yeah, B, come over. No, so we're like, we'll come get you, right? Well, we'll come get you. But uh, she's like, I got to go shopping. And we're like, all right, listen, this is what I want you to do. Get your important documents, put them away and uh, get some clothing, put them in a bag. Yeah. Sexier, the better. And go to the store and get some food, anything that's canned or that will last. Without refrigeration. Without refrigeration. That will be best. So she goes to the store. She heads over here. We pick her up and she's wearing a little red pencil dress. Yeah, like a tank dress. Sandals. Flip flop. No extra clothes, no documents. And her food shopping consisted of, wait for it, (laughs) cookies and powdered milk. And canned tuna. (laughs) And canned tuna. That was it. A can of tuna, powdered milk, and chocolate chip cookies. (laughs) That's what she came to survive with. And flip flops. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> trust. So the storm starts rolling in that night. Now I'm a panic. I'm a ball of sweat, right? Yeah. I go through the yard. I pick everything up, make sure everything is is okay. Nothing's going to fly through the window. I'm just locking the neighborhood down is yes. what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. It's about 10 o'clock, I think. Yeah. And I'm just a bundle of nerves. Yeah. Right. Because it's scary. I'm watching the news and we're tracking the storm before we go to bed. We're just sort of waiting and, yeah. and a bundle of nerves. And I look over and bees, bees asleep. Gone. <laughs> And she sleeps basically. Now I wait. The storm finally hit at I think about three, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And we were up because as we mentioned in in another podcast, our house leaks like a sinking submarine. (laughs) So it's our duty. We have to be on deck. This is, we've been training for (laughs) this. Absolutely. We batten down the hatches. We're trying to (laughs) cover the windows. I hooked up a plastic thing to the door like MacGyver. (laughs) Uh, that did nothing. <laughs> Except collect leaves. Except collect leaves, which was not my intention, <laughs> but I may have invented something. <laughs> So uh, I'm walking up and down the stairs, right? Because we live in a lighthouse. And I'm walking up and down <laughs> and B, groggy-eyed, sort of cracks the door open. She's like, why are you walking around so much? <laughs> Stop making all the You're noise. You're making too much noise. So then the eye of the storm hits, right? We're in the eye of the storm. And I'm like, let's go outside. And you're like, no, 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 we should go outside. And I'm like, come on, it's going to be fine. And I mean, it was dead. And we have a lot of these videos that we're going to throw up on Patreon. They're, I mean, they're crap. I mean, what a way to sell it, Richard. <laughs> Uh, but it is, there were just crappy videos that we took during the night of just stuff. So the eye of the store comes and I go downstairs and I pass out because I said, if that was the worst of it, we lived through it, then the other half won't be as bad. And then it did, it just stormed down for the next three hours or so. Yeah. And uh, that was it. We had a lot of cleanup to do. All the power went out for two and a half days. We are very, Ooh. very, very behind on life right now <laughs> oh because of those days, right? We had so much to do and we didn't get anything done. Be is safe. People asked, is she safe? She yeah. said, yes, she's not only safe, she's well rested. <laughs> she's, she's dry. Ready to go. She still looks good. She, we were conserving water. The way it works here, <laughs> right, in Mexico is, it's not like you lose water, but you lose power and you need a pump to pump the water up to the, your roof to put into a tank and then gravity brings all the water down. So once you lose power, it's virtually impossible to get your water from the bottom all the way up to the top. So if you have a tank of water, you have to make sure that that tank of water basically lasts you for however long that you're going to be out of power. So yeah. if it's three days, that that tank. What's the word? Ration. We well, better ration that water yeah. as long as you, you can. Pulling on our motorhome days. Right. The motorhome days where you, you know, you, uh, what's that shower called? The, not a sloppy shower. <laughs> Oh, come on, it has a name. Uh, spank. Where you shut the water off and then you soap up and then you... It pss- has a name? Yeah, it has a name. Like a dance? Is it an army shower? I don't know. I don't know. Navy shower? Those are totally different. Air, f- <laughs> Air Force shower? <laughs> Yeah, I forget what it is. You have to, you got to take one of those showers. You sort of fill up your sink for dishes, yeah. whatever, whatnot. You know, we're disgusting. We've been outside and we're just fixing everything. And B comes rolling down the stairs, <laughs> wringing her hair out from, <laughs> from her long, hot shower. We were like, I'm did like, you just take did a you just, shower? She's like, yes, I did. Oh, so, oh it's so relaxing. <laughs> Like, motherfucker, B. I'll <laughs> oh, be all right. We're a rationing face. And it was especially hard because right now we are planning for, hold on, wait for it. <laughs> We're planning the first third annual flirty down and dirty party, right? So we have this party going on uh, for four straight days. Yes. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. I'm going to pump some music in here. Put it in. Put it in a baseline. In this kick-ass villa down here in Playa del Carmen, which means the Carmen of Playa. Yes. There's a pool and a rooftop and it's got like 12 bedrooms and it's amazing. And we are doing that the next, mid- week? next week. Holy shit. I was going to say next month. No. So yeah. And we're going to be doing that again. If you want to be a part of the third second annual flirty <laughs> down and dirty party. And what we want to do basically is these parties where we we are welcoming a lot of the vanilla lifestyle and the the lifestyle lifestyle and just sort of fusing those two together, just having a party with open minds and open sexuality and just a place where you can have fun and relax and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. What say you, Lauren? 
I say we hope to take it around so you can see different parts of Mexico and just have like a more intimate place to hang out with your friends on the beach. We want to rock out with our cocks out with our friends all around Mexico. So we just have to find different places to go. Maybe we'll go to Isla Mujeres. And yeah. We'll Albash go Albash. Bacalar. Bacalar. Tulum. Oh, Belize is a lovely part of Mexico. <laughs> But yeah, well, we can go down there, right? Because yeah. it's just right down past the Tulum. Yes. Once we do the Tulum, then we move on to Belize. Yep. Then Nicaragua. Can't I don't, wait. Yeah. Peru is just Peru. A, another 30 minutes or the, so. The, the Netherlands. <laughs> is that down there too? Um, it's down there, uh, right? Like to the left or something. Oh, yeah. Belize, uh, Chile. Panama, Chile, Holland. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know. It's what I learned in school. Yeah. Is that online anywhere yet? I don't yeah, think it is. Yeah, it's on our website. It uh, is? Yeah. I think it's called Parties. Oh. <laughs> so cryptic. <laughs> well. All right. Now I'm going to bleed into the next part, which is where we diddle ourselves. Literally, we're going to play. We with, are. We're going to play with ourselves. I'm excited. Not all of it will be here. We're going to do a portion of this on Patreon. So Licorice Love is uh, an amazing website that we partnered up with. If they go to Licorice Love, what do they find? Just a beautiful department store, but of all the good toys. So you don't have to sift through all the crap. They've done everything for you. And it's just it's so simple. I think we're ambassadors now. Is that true? Yes. We, we are? Yeah. Well, we don't have our code yet. But Oh, well, we will be. Yeah. S- sorry about that. I spoiled it. <laughs> Uh, well, we're going to be ambassadors of it. I, I don't know what it means. And they were like, hey, we want you guys to be ambassadors. And we're like, hey, we're into that. I get in a tattoo. Uh, yeah, I already got the Licorice Love logo tattooed on my penis. <laughs> I did. It's super small. My penis, not the tattoo. The t- t- tattoo is huge. Like it's spelled a little weird. Licorice Love? Yeah. How do you spell it? Liquor, like L-I-C-K-E-R-I-S-H. Love. It's not spelled like the candy licorice? No. Okay. This is how dumb I am. <laughs> I've been involved with licorice love oh my God. for what, three months now yeah. at least? Never knew it was spelled <laughs> differently. That's how fucking stupid I am. You're not stupid. You're no, just not a strong speller. <laughs> All right. Now, what we did is we ordered some stuff from them. They were sending to us so we could try them out. Now, they made one huge mistake <laughs> in the process, which was using Mexican mail. Yes. Never, ever do that. Ever. It will make it to the border. And then as soon as it gets over the border, and this is regular mail, not like DHL or Federal Express, like the light on the event horizon of a black hole, once the mail reaches the border, <laughs> you will never see it again. It will just vanish, right? You'll see the tracking, 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 and then it just sort of vanishes. It's right? Jason. We're waiting for its last leg of the trip. We're like, come on, sex toys. You're so close. You're so close, sex toys. And uh, we even called a couple people. Where's our licorice love? And they're like, it's coming. And then the next day we went on the website and they're like, sorry, folks, it's Mexico. They, they were lovely enough to send us a different set of toys. What did we get? We got one a, a guy braider by Hot Octopus. It's a what? A, a, well, a guy braider. Oh, a guy braider. Yeah, that's where I put it on my cock and I jerk off with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that later. So later we're going to videotape ourselves using these toys. Uh, we're going to throw that up on Patreon. The other one I got you was a cock ring because, you know, I love your junk jewelry. Yeah, but it's a special cock ring. It's not just like regular cock ring that I wear out as junk jewelry. This one has a a little thing on it that vibrates, right? Yeah. So that when I'm balls deep inside of you, it rubs up against your clit. What's that one called? They call that little thing that you're talking about, they call it a unique nub rub. Say that 10 times. I I can because that was my nickname in college. (laughs) Unique nut rub. <laughs> Unique nut rub. So I'm going to try on the Vito rock ring, and that is going to fit over my penis. Yes. And it's going to fall down onto my testicles and or perineum. And then once I'm inside of you, we should be able to uh, harmonize together. What happens? <laughs> well, we're going to figure it out. Yeah. We're, we're going like to do twister. it on camera. I don't know how long it's going to take. It could be an hour video just trying to put that thing on my penis. <laughs> And then the third thing and the fourth thing, well, there's actually two more. They sent me some, the nipple covers. You're going to wear those the whole time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then what is the last thing? You got some balls, right? Yeah, I got love balls. (laughs) These are your balls you were talking about. Kegel balls. Love balls. Kegel balls. We're going to put those in and we're going to tell everybody what the Kegel balls are for. And we're going to show them entering you in seven different angles. (laughs) 
Do you have the thing on there that I didn't get? No, I don't. It's in the Mexican Postal Service somewhere anyway. Yeah. And that one was really cool because it looked like Batman. And I was upset that that's not the one that Well, this one's lost. pretty Batman-y. Yeah, it's not as Batman as the other one, though. We're going to show you how Batman it is. Go to patreon.com forward slash room seven seven. Yeah. And uh, check out the videos. Now we can't give you the video on Patreon, but we give you sort of instructions there because even that's illegal. <laughs> they don't even really let you do that because they don't yeah, want... they can't post a direct link. Yeah. Let me just tell this story really quick because I think it's funny. Yeah. We had put our last X-rated video up on Patreon and we were like, hey, if you want to see the X-rated video, <laughs> then go to this link. And Patreon was like, hey guys, you can't do that. But the message actually read this. Hey, guys, that video was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Thank you so much. You would made my morning. But here's the deal. You can't do that. I was like, all right, well, thanks for watching. Glad you saw my cock and my wife's asshole. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm sure he followed the link. Anyway, it'll be one of those deals where we're playing with these licorice love toys. and Yeah, come get, come get in bed with us. Have fun. We're going to give you a little sample right now. Although I can't give it to you right now because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but as soon as we record it, I'm going to put it right here. Yeah. So here we are. We have all of the licorice love. They're, it's almost like in a... In between us. Sort of. Like we're all mingling, but we haven't had sex yet. <laughs> all right. So let's enter, let's enter these Kegel balls into your your vagina area let's just start with one i mean we can start with one okay yeah i have high expectations <laughs> you're gonna do great <laughs> now does this give you any pleasure at all when i tug on it just a little bit but i have to stand up after this don't you think so? all right well then stand up yeah stop being such a baby <laughs> put the balls in and stand I up am. i feel so full oh yeah <laughs> And then... This is the hot octopus, the guy braider. I'm going to put my cock in here like this, right? Yeah. Oh, I had to stop because I almost came. This is the rock. Explain this part. How do you turn it on? Woo! Richard, this is intense. I'll take the camera. Okay. okay. Oh. Can you feel it in the... It was upside down and backwards. Yes. Give me your pussy. <laughs> there you go. Oh, perfect. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, fuck. All right, so that was that. It sounded like a weed whacker when you... <laughs> it was something so funny, I could stop laughing. It was like... <laughs> yeah, it's like, I just want to make sure that you know that's the toy and not how I sound in bed. If you want to see that, head over to Patreon. Check it out. I don't know if it's super, super informative, but it is super, super pornographic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like 20 minutes long, so enjoy yourself. All right, Lauren. Yes, Richard. I'm a little discombobulated because I moved furniture before we started, so my body doesn't know what to do. <laughs> I'm trying to find a better position. For the uncomfortable futon? Yeah, I mean, it's still uncomfortable. I'm trying to find a better section. So we moved the little table around. It's thrown me off completely. Me too, I have to be honest. <laughs> Should we move it back? <laughs> I don't know. All right, hold on. Let's move it back, and then we'll come back on. Hold on. All right. Oh, can't see the screen. Yeah, that goes there. All right. It's way better. Oh, my God. Everything feels <gasps> right. It's so weird. Uh, remind me to never, ever change everything around again. Now, the only thing that I want to change in here, and by here, I mean the state <laughs> of Quintana Roo, is the heat. Oh, my God. I keep looking at my body in the gym, right? Yeah, so does everybody else. Oh, shut up. I am the same color as the wall. Yeah, the wall, so everybody knows, is eggshell. <laughs> and I keep thinking, you know what? I'm going to go outside and I'm going to catch a little, just 30 minutes. Right, catch some sun. Like, I'm going to go and I'm going to do just 30 minutes. I'll go up to, like, hang laundry or something mm -hmm. and five minutes, just beads of sweat yeah. just pouring down my body. It's no fun. So I'd like that to stop now because it's hard uh, sitting in your sofa, your other uncomfortable sofa, watching the Philadelphia Eagles lose once again <clears throat> while dripping in sweat because it should be like fall things. Like the weird neighbor Kevin is raking leaves in the front yard. Ooh, the thought of having fall leaves I haven't thought yeah. of in a long time. Nothing falls here. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to tell our listener that uh, we got all sexed up. 
Yes, we broke the chain. We broke the cycle. The we cycle, did. that's what I meant, not the chain. Well, it was like a dry cycle in our lives where we could not have sex with anyone. We had a chat about it in one of our virtual workshops afterwards and was like, who's had the most recent sex? And people were like, February. Yeah, it goes with my theory that COVID hit swingers the hardest. I've not heard anybody in the news talk about it. I'm going to do some field reporting. You should totally do that. I should. Yeah. I'm gonna get, and I'm going to get a news van. A little bit about this particular hookup. Now, this story brings into light a couple of different things. Chivalry, kindness. Yes embarrassment. <laughs> yes. That's the one I'm guilty of. <laughs> what playtime can be with just a tiny little shift of certain things. Are you as lost as our listener? I am. Great. I have you right where I want you. <laughs> I'm going to get to it. But first, I want to describe this couple a little bit. Lovely people. Yes. How would you describe them? They are those people who put other people first before mm -hmm. them. They are gorgeous to just stare at. Yeah. They make you feel a little taller and a little prettier. He's a large guy. He's very tall, but you feel just as tall as he does. Yeah. It's like something about him. They just like, they are, exude this positivity and stuff. And it just yeah. makes you feel a little bit better about yourself. Yeah. To time. give you an example is we we'll always try to talk shit about people around them and they just want not a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just going to stay. I'm going to stay right right here. And you guys want to talk shit. That is fine with you. We respect that. But we are got, not going to partake. <laughs> Have a good day, sir. <laughs> that is sort of them. They're, they're just those people. And she is like a beauty queen to me. I always had this little running joke with her. She's like three minutes into a conversation <laughs> and asks me a question. And I usually answer, <laughs> you're so pretty. <laughs> Even I'm not listening. You're so pretty. So they came to town. We don't always play with them. We don't always have playtime with them. Sometimes it's just sort of social time. Yeah. So the first night we pick them up at the hotel. We pick them up, right? The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we pick them up curbside. And when I say curbside, that's not a figure of speech. <laughs> we have them sneak out of the hotel, <laughs> down the sidewalk and say, hey, hey, come to the curb. Come to the curb. We don't want them to see us here. <laughs> I think they're going to shoot on sight. <laughs> So they walk down the curb and uh, they jump in the car. <laughs> we scream away like we just robbed a bank. And off we go to the restaurant. We talk a little bit and laugh a little bit. And then we get out of the car. She says to us, and by the way, hey, guys, um, do you think I should put pasties on underneath this? Now, you have to imagine this, that she has the most perfect set of boobs you've ever seen in your life. And I'm not a boobs guy. Yeah, you're not. But when I look at her boobs, I'm like, yeah, I want those boobies. <laughs> I really like those boobies. They're not huge, but they're big for her frame. Yeah. And I love it. Perfectly shaped. Perfect. Yeah. So she stands up and she's like, should I put pasties on this? And she's wearing this top. And essentially, you can just see right fucking through it. And immediately, my dick starts getting hard. <laughs> You I'm, love naughty. I'm sort of into that public display of yeah. naughtiness and nakedness and making people look. I think I said, no, 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 you'll be fine. And then I got out of the car and I was like, you know what? Hold on a second. Stand up. Let me see you again. Let me see you in the sunlight. And I looked at her and, and her tits are just shining right through this top. I'm thinking, you know what? If a light hits that the right way, it's going to be fucking amazing on one level. <laughs> Another level in this tiny little town that we live yes. in, people will literally shit themselves. Yes. Right? Especially the, the staff there at the restaurant. So we say, maybe you should put, she's like, I got pasties. I'm prepared. I already know. In a flash, she put them on. So we she opened the trunk. Yeah. She literally zipped open her bag. She had the kind that are like gel reusables, right? So this wasn't a pasty where you rip off the fabric part. She had these things ready almost as if they were magnets to her nipples and mm -hmm. just left hand to right or whatever in the shirt. Boom, boom. This is a n not a situation that was her first time. <laughs> right, totally. Boom, boom, done. Let's go. I'm ready to go. And I was like, they're on already? That's kind of fucking amazing. Yeah. We had a good time. We took them back to the hotel, didn't actually stop. We just told them to roll out and we're going to keep on going <laughs> in case anybody sees us. And then, so then we meet up with them again two nights later. And yeah. they're like, hey, let's just have fun. And we know we do because with them, we're always like, hey, let's just get fucking crazy. Yeah. And that's sort of how, how we like it. Like no plan, no, you know, we like this, you like that. Let's just sit down, have a drink and get crazy. So we decided to do it in the afternoon because, uh, we're all 
old people and we like <laughs> we like doing it during the day. Well, that's what I love. They said, do you guys want to do day or evening? We like daytime. We we're like, so do we. That's the best. Absolutely. Insider tip. Say, I want a nooner. <laughs> it is time management at its best. Absolutely. So they come over. Again, we pick them up. Come by the curb. <laughs> we're in the car. We're behind the tree. Behind the tree. Walk down the street. There. See us. I'm going to flash my lights. <laughs> Flashing my lights. Walk towards the car. <laughs> Uh, so we pick them up, <laughs> we drive away again, off they go with us, and we come back to the house, turn on the music, and start day drinking. Now, I haven't day drank. Day drank? Sure. I haven't day drank a long time. I still get anxiety every time. I don't. They have drugs for that you could use. They're a little Molly next time. <laughs> sure. Let's go on the Molly train again. <laughs> oh, God. We should start a second podcast called The Molly Train, where it's just our adventures on Molly. <laughs> this week, Richard lost a limb. <laughs> Uh, so we go upstairs, right? Again, fucking professionals. And I love this about them. And this is something that I noticed, right? We all walk into the bedroom mm -hmm. with our drinks. Mm -hmm. We all walk in there like a tiny little army. As soon as we walk in, everybody starts taking off their clothing. Yes. This is akin to being a professional, like an electrician. You come in, you set your tools down, you start setting up. Ma'am, don't worry about your refrigerator. I'm going to fix it. I'm just going right? to set up my tools. Yeah. They start walking in. Just the clothes start coming off. They're, that whole uncomfortable time is yeah. gone. Yeah, because people, if you're just getting started in this and you're getting into the lifestyle, that thing where people take off your clothing in a very hot, <laughs> seductive way, <laughs> I know you've all... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that shit doesn't happen. So save us all a bit of time and just take your fucking pants off. <laughs> let's just move on. Yeah, let's just move on to step two. Maybe underwear and lingerie is a little bit different, but I'm talking the actual clothing. Jeans, yeah. the socks. And if we're in a winter or fall situation, as we were talking, we wish we were in. My sweater vest is on. <laughs> your sweater vest. You know what I mean? What do I do with that ascot? Do I rip that off his neck? <laughs> Just take them off, throw them in a pile. You'll deal with them later when we say, get your clothes and get out. <laughs> So they immediately start taking off their clothes. Now, it's not just their physical beauty, because let's face it, I, I, I noticed this thing where I'm getting older. Yes. Yeah, it seems to happen <laughs> every day. Yeah, I notice mine every day, too. It's turning into a pattern, I'm afraid. Oh, God. Every day I wake up older. And I think I, they're the same age or older than us. They may be a little older than us. I'm looking around at us, and I'm like, you know, we're not spring chickens anymore. <laughs> that idea of that really beautiful 20-something year old couple, which is a really attractive when you look at it, when you stare at it, right? Yeah. I will attest to this. There is nothing more sexy than a confident older woman. Absolutely. An experienced, calm, level-headed older woman. I would choose that every day of the week and twice on Sunday over a 20-something. And when you find that beauty within someone, you start looking at that person or those people, in this case, this couple, it's like an aura. It's not something to, to take for granted, that amazing energy that somebody holds. Yeah, you don't have to be perfect. I mean, let's face it, we're certainly not perfect. Like you were saying, like, okay, if you could have a dream Instagram couple or something, like right. these fitness people that are like- Great to look at. Not only are you talking about the essence and stuff, but there's like a sexually charged, you're saying that confidence and stuff, and it's like you infuse that with their charge, knowing what they want. But you can't take away age, right? As far as beauty, you look at somebody and you go, they are a beautiful couple that is in their late 40s yeah. or 50. I don't know how old they are, but there's that sort of asterisk. They're yeah. a nice looking older couple, we'll say, or you'll say they're a hot young couple. Right? Yeah. What age do you think that happens? Like 40? 37. <laughs> That's when it started for me. And then it turns to their hot couple and then it's an older couple. Yeah. Which is where we are. Now. Yeah. Uh, or if not, we're knocking on the door. <laughs> is anybody in there? Oh, hey, there's so many people in here. <laughs> we're, it's Richard and Lauren. Oh, we're here. We're hosting. We immediately start getting at it. I don't even remember how. I just remember lying on the bed and grabbing somebody. This is the funny thing about her. She says it every single time, and I love her for it. You know what I want? I'm just going to watch you guys this time. This time. <laughs> this that's the time. key. So this time we're like, hey, lady, go over to that chair. You've been wanting to do this for a long time. Yeah. And watch us ruin Lauren. Watch him and I 
take her to task. We are going to treat her like a dirty, disgusting little whore. And she's going to love it. We're going to love it. Go sit over there. She lasted four seconds on that chair before she comes over to the bed. And we're like, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be over there. She's like, I know. I just can't help it. I want to be over here touching. (laughs) That happens every single time. So I was like, all right, well, you just stay right here next to us and touch and do whatever you want. And we start attacking you. Yes. All of this stress and all of this crap that we've been going through in the past couple of weeks is just like melting away. You're just sort of sliding into your body's just sort of sliding and I'm making out with you and he's just touching you and going down on you. He really enjoys that sort of petting and pre-play, which I actually enjoy as because it's different. It's not just like, go suck my cock. Yeah, and different he, than your husband. <laughs> I would, I, your words, not mine. Go suck my cock. So he just kind of melts into me and just starts rubbing my body and giving me soft kisses everywhere. And I don't really know what we were doing until I started stuck his cock in my mouth. Like he, he loves going down on you and staying down there and playing with you and I'm playing with her boobs at the same time. Then I just, she wanted to suck my cock and um, <laughs> having somebody sucking your cock, right? So you're, you're in front of me and he's taking you from behind. You're getting fucked. Mm-hmm. And so your face is in front of me. Yes. And you're sort of squealing, like staring at me face to face almost uh, uh-huh. while she's going down on me. And you're squealing a little bit because he has a giant cock. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like, that's one of my favorite things in the world. What? Like, I want to hear you squeal a little bit. A little bit of pain. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I know it's not the greatest for you, but... um, No, I like it. I know, but, you know, sometimes the day after you're like, my vagina hurts. Oh, always the day after. Yeah. But I like it in the moment because it is raw. So things are going really well up until I ruin it. So I decide this is just too hot. So (laughs) go over to you and I'm like, I'm going to fuck you, take you and I lay you down and I put it inside of you. I'm start fucking you. And now I'm playing with her boobs on one side. I'm fucking you and I'm laying right down beside her. Now he's kneeling down by your side and you're sucking his cock and I am in your ear and I'm like, you take that cock, you swallow that cock and I'm fucking you and I can feel my dick hitting the back of you and I'm just going harder and harder and harder. And then you say to me, you're like, give me that cock, give me that cock. And then you say to me, you say, feed me that cock. And I grab your back of your head and the base of his cock and I'm slamming them both together. It was so hot. You're squealing. And at that moment, I'm like, oh, I'm going to come. And it was like two seconds. I crawl up into a ball to try to not come. So I get in a some sort of ski jump <laughs> position. Like I just left the ramp <laughs> or like a yoga pose. Like it was a yeah, weird yoga sure, pose. Yeah, yeah. So I leave your your body. <laughs> my penis goes out of you and it didn't work. I just came on myself in a weird position. So and then I looked up and I'm like, I came. This would normally be an embarrassing situation because I, I think we were playing for it. Mm, four minutes. Not even. No. no. Like yeah. four minutes. Like four minutes. No. I mean, the playtime, yes. But as far as the actual sex, I think I was inside of you for two minutes. <laughs> I just want to say that when you pulled out right and you're like, I'm going to come and, and you started holding everything back, then they were like, just come, enjoy I it. I know, but it was too late. I was trying to hold it back. It didn't work. And then you had some sort of weird half-gasm. Yeah, I did have a half-gasm because I, I, half of it went <laughs> back inside of me. <laughs> half of it landed on the sheets, which was a complete <laughs> fucking waste <laughs> and, and now I'm, I'm like anyway they're like we ne- we are never unhappy when someone comes that is our rule yeah now this is a key thing right because i don't feel stupid i just say well i'm just gonna go for a second one yeah. that's it they make you feel so comfortable and it is so important to have people like that to have a, a good time yeah and we spent the rest of the time playing like i did everything that i could do i never came back fully did i come back fully i can't remember i th- remember having sex with you again yeah you were you had a heart on she was blowing you again yeah, yeah, you were yeah. like yeah i did come back for a second round which i was very impressed with myself these people are probably the most polite human beings on the face of the planet during the playtime and just being with her she came she was almost apologizing she because she's like she came all over the sheets <laughs> oh, i am so sorry i'm gonna go i'm gonna go buy you new linens 
I, I think I may have come all over your sheets. And I'm like, don't worry about it's it. It's a sheet. And, like- and then him, he, one of my favorite moments, one of the times where he was getting ready to, to fuck you, he's high, he forgot to bring his own condoms. Yeah. Okay, so he had to use our condoms. They're just regular skin condoms. You're allergic to latex. Just regular, normal condoms. Right. And he's having trouble putting them on. And there he is standing there in his glorious form. And he's yelling at himself. And he's saying this. Oh, goddamn Coke can cock. <laughs> this, oh, this fucking penis. Jeez, I, I am so sorry. It's just like a Coke can. This is just ridiculous. Just yelling at his penis. <laughs> Me, I would have been like, I can't get this shit on. My cock is too big. What size are these? What size are these, Richard? <laughs> Where do you buy it down in the store down here? Come on, man. Jesus. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, well, if you have like just a regular size, does it just rise up? And he said, yeah, it fits me like a crop top. Yes, it was a crop top. Condom. I lost it. I'm like, I can't. Oh, he hates his penis. I know, but it's it's one of the greatest penises I've ever seen. I know, it's a great penis. That was our time. <laughs> and... I- the fact that we sat there for like half the playtime was just sort of sitting, talking and laughing. And I think it's really important to remember that just that essence of connection with people is so, so important to have. It's fine if you don't, right? We've been down and dirty. And we're like, I don't even know their name. Like when it was, we would do stuff in the, in the jacuzzi beds or whatever, right? And that's a different kind of sex, yeah. right? This is nice to have. Especially as our first time back breaking the dry cycle. Like I couldn't have imagined a more comfortable place because I do get nervous, especially if there's a big break in between getting down with another couple. I don't know why I get nervous still, but. I don't know why you get nervous. You've been having sex for so long. It's it's like riding a bike, yes. but with no seat. That might be. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just get me. <laughs> such a random shit that comes out of your mouth. I should have masturbated and prepped myself, but that was weeks and weeks of anxiety. That was (laughs) semen that was built up all the way into my chest cavity. And it just had to come out. It was just a release. And it should have come out. It should have come out in the most explosive way. It should have. Way. But no one will ever know because I was curled up in a little ball. Yeah, I wish you would have just been hands on the hips and thrusting Listen, your hips forward and just let it just go I all believe, over. I believed I could stop it. Like I did. the force. <laughs> A half gasm. I had a half gasm. Yeah. Yeah. I got to get rid of that other half. It's in there somewhere. So I just want to, I don't know why I was thinking like if you were going to come so hard, you could have like hit yourself in the face. And that reminded me of when we were talking about at dinner or something, how you tried to blow yourself when you were a child. (laughs) Well, I think everybody has tried. One I'm point. curious. Like, well, no, someone asked me because they were like, hey, your penis is pretty long. Have you ever tried it? And I was like, of course I've tried it. <laughs> I was surprised when you said that. All right. Well, I'm not going to talk about okay. on this one. Okay. Maybe the next one. Maybe we can another talk about that. conversation. Okay. Uh, Listen, you're very flexible as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Who wouldn't have tried? If, you, if your penis is long enough and you're in a position sometimes rolling around, you're like, ah, oh, my own penis came close, pretty close to my mouth right there. I wonder if. if- <laughs> we could talk about that later. <laughs> okay. I just thought it was really funny. Thanks for bringing that up, though, so I could be even more embarrassed. It's awesome. <laughs> No, not so embarrassing. Well, no, but then when they brought it up, you know, tried, 42 old years old. And uh, yeah, I can't get my hips in that position anymore. <laughs> no. I look like I'm in traction. I just sort of, <laughs> st- I have no flexibility whatsoever. <laughs> it's just sad looking. Yeah. Well, I'll try. I'll show you tonight how far back I can get. I think I think we should have a measuring contest. Yeah, let's do a contest. Yeah. Who gets the closest? We'll do that okay. at, our, at our party that we're going to talk about. All right, uh, Lauren, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Get out. All right, we have somebody here 
who moved my heart a <laughs> well, while back. Anyone who reaches out moves my heart. Anyone. Yeah. But he sent an, an especially kind email. Now, this was- over, It actually was. It, it made me cry a little bit. And his email, in part of it, was him crying from our podcast. So it just made each other cry. Now, this email came in over a year ago. I just went back and I checked it. Mm-hmm. He called it a book, and it was a book. <laughs> he wrote us this email talking about his relationship relationship, his wants and his needs, just sort of things that he was going through in his life at the time. This, uh-huh. again, was last year. Padded all of that with, Richard, you're a god. Mm. I love you. Right. I, I wish I were you. That's how I read it. Yeah. Anyways, he had a good plane story in there. Not a plane story, just a story about- <laughs> In a plane. On a plane or in a plane. <laughs> Say hello, Jeff. Hello, Richard and Lauren. Hi. <laughs> When we're going to get to the part where you talk and say really great things about us. That's that's going to come <laughs> later. This is a situation. Now, I wouldn't say it's common, but it does come up. And this situation that I'm talking about is people asking us, hey, I'm into this. Mm-hmm. How do I get my wife into this? Or my husband. And the other side is usually a lot easier. Wife comes in. She's like, hey, I'm thinking about having a threesome with my friend Bambi. Are you into that <laughs> or not? Dude's usually like... <laughs> I'm in. I've always been into that, but I didn't know how to tell you. (laughs) We just met two people, I feel like, in the last month. And the girls were the ones that brought it up. And I just am always like, woohoo. Well, yeah. You. I mean, with a guy, it's it's walking a tightrope. Yeah, you know? I guess you're right. For guys like me, if, if I was different, I, I guess it would be weird to hear it if I had never thought about it before. Yeah. The most common answer you always get is, am I not enough? Am I not enough? Mm-hmm. And my answer to that is, no, Lauren, you're not. <laughs> Listen, you're great at cooking. Mm-hmm. You make a nice bed. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Basically, but I shorten all that down. I yeah. say, do better. Yeah, do better. Which usually works. My friend, you were in a situation where you were in a marriage. You knew that you had sort of some of this sexual stuff going on in your head about fantasies and being open. At the time, you couldn't express that. So tell us a little bit about how long you were with your wife at this point when it sort of just started coming to the surface. Yeah, I think when it started coming to the surface, you know, we were together for 13 years. This came up probably after two or three years of being together. We got married in 2013. I think from the start, there was always this battle, you know, how you feel like you should behave as a husband. Mm -hmm. And then this other side of how you, what you really feel inside that you want to express. And in our situation, there was just the dynamic of anything that really went outside of that traditional monogamous bond of marriage was just uncomfortable. It was that carousel. You know, you want to bring this out. You want to be honest with your spouse. You want to tell them what you're feeling. Uh, But when you start going down certain roads, it looks like it's unwelcome. So it shuts you back inside, right? All right. I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but spoiler alert, they're not together anymore. Right, but not because of lifestyle stuff. No, no, not necessarily. But I'm just, I just want to point out going forward that this may be a lesson of what are things, maybe perhaps, of what not to do. (laughs) Maybe some things of what you can do. We could, in fact, learn from his failures. Maybe. Again, I'm going to preface they are not together, not specifically because of just this. That is correct, right? That's absolutely correct. You know, we had gone through a lot of work, a lot of effort. We did a lot of different workshops, uh, different types of counseling, different uh, emotionally focused therapy, you know, uh, couples counseling, individual counseling, the whole thing. So you're absolutely right in saying that this was not the sole reason that drove us apart. I would say having the outlook that I have versus what she has really just highlighted the difference. What was your relationship? I just want to sort of do it in parts here. So the beginning part of the relationship, would you say good marriage with a lot of sexual understanding or would you say that the basis from where it started was already sort of off a little bit? I would say the basis from where it started was off a little bit. I think there was a lot of pressure that I carried with myself through life, with my past, that put me in a situation where I felt like I had to be something I'm not. You know, you're married now, so this part of yourself shuts off. All right. So what did you want to be? We all know what that is, right? Yeah. That is Mr. Brady. That is Mr. and Mrs. Wilson from Dennis the Menace. I believe they (laughs) slept in separate beds. (laughs) <laughs> thing. But while this is going on, what are the images? What are the things that are coming into your head that you want it to look like? What I want it to look like was going on a journey. It's I know that this Ward Cleaver vision of a husband was not me at my core. So what I wanted to do was go on an exploration journey 
and a lot of other things, but particularly sexually in some non-traditional areas, swinging being right. one of them, you know, just learning about what I would call a sex positive or, you know, without judgment kind of expression of what you feel inside. And I just had this conversation with a friend of ours who is a woman. She's single right now, but she wants to live a non-monogamous life, but she doesn't, and this is really hard for people, I think, to even wrap their heads around. She doesn't necessarily want to live a non-monogamous life. She wants the thought thoughts at least to be non-monogamous. She wants to be open enough to be able to talk about fantasies that include others than her current boyfriend or whoever she marries or whoever that is. And that may be enough for people. Yeah, Is that sort of what you were wishing for or hoping for was to have that open dialogue? Yes, exactly. Uh, a good example of that is, you know, we were reading this one book and the example of what the author is a female author and was saying was a very charming and, and, and attractive character of her husband was they were walking down the streets of New York and the husband kept looking up mm. and couldn't figure out why he kept looking up. And then eventually she she realized that every time a pretty girl would walk by, rather than look at the pretty girl, he would look up so as not to embarrass his wife, right? And of course, the author thought that was great. And, you know, my wife thought that was great. And I thought, that's, that's <laughs> fucking insanity. You know, to me, if I want to be honest and open and I see a pretty Wait, girl. Yeah, hold on. Let's just back up. <laughs> I got to find this book and burn it. Listen, I'm a doctor, okay? And I can tell you when it comes to that stuff, just my psychological training. Yeah. My advice is uh, go fuck yourself. Because <laughs> here's the thing, whether you are looking up or you are looking at that girl, you've already made a choice. And that choice is your mind. So it's it's like now you're just sort of living inside of a false world. So the chances that this happens are very, very close to the truth, which is why did you look at her? I didn't look at her. I looked up. Oh, okay. Why do you have to look up? How did you know she was coming? So so that you could look up. Exactly. Well, that's my quote. Like, yeah. what? He just you already <laughs> saw her, you fucking liar. It's like right? a spidey sense, honey. <laughs> oh, could, okay. Just, oh, okay. Then you're an angel then. I could just feel them. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, total angel. I'm sorry. You're the, right, baby. The force was strong with that yeah, one. Yeah, she must have been super pretty. I didn't even see. That kind of stuff, I, I guess you're right, is out there. I don't know it because I don't read that crap, it's to be so honest. It's so old-fashioned. Like, wear a covers over your eyes or like... Well, that's a religion. I don't think we want to go into that. No, I'm just saying, but it's... Oh, you mean put blinders on? Yeah. You don't mean be Muslim and no, 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 Sharia no. law or anything <laughs> like that. I was going on a completely different I wouldn't different bring that tangent. up because, yeah, that's way too above my Sharia intelligence grade. Sharia law is a very good topic for a swingers podcast. It's so good. We, we can do it right after we do our movie reviews. Yeah. Let's do a segment called Sharia's Law. <laughs> Sheree. Come on, Sheree. <laughs> now, there has to be a first time, and I'm getting, this is before you find Richard and Lauren, but there has to be a point where you sort of say, I am going to try to be my authentic self, and I'm going to bring this up. How do you broach the subject? So what I found was the Desire Forum online, right? So I started right. reading the stories, and I found that, and I just found that it sounded interesting. You know, it was mm -hmm. the stories about the people who go there that had never been in the lifestyle before, but they kind of took the plunge together and they came out on the other end, a much stronger couple that improved their communication. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like that is exactly the type of thing I want to do. The thing was, okay, now I've got to talk to her about it. And as I started bringing it up, you know, I could just almost see the blood pressure. Right. There, there was, and, in, and, in, and I'm certainly in no way here to, to dog on her in any way whatsoever. She's a wonderful person. But for her, what we ended up learning was that it was a triggering, exactly what you said earlier. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not that based off of her background. But that was the first time, and this was probably 2009, 2010 timeframe that I brought it up. I, I think how it, the conversation went was, do you really need that? And it shut me right. down and I said, no, nope, no, I don't. No, I don't. And bang, right back into the cave I went for a couple of years. Yeah, that's, that's kind of harsh. And I mean, I feel like I'm not enough, period, for you. <laughs> Was giving you that blank space just to make you feel you. insecure. You're just nodding like, yes, yeah, that is and, true. And, and it took you 18 years to realize it. <laughs> wow. 
I'm just processing everything because it's, you know, it's so hard. I have a couple that I'm on WhatsApp with that I'm trying to sort of explain to the man and to the woman. They're both on different sides. I'm helping. As much as you can. Yeah, as much as I can, just to share my point of view on it. It's very difficult when you're living in a world where your your self-worth and all of your good things, sort of, you lay it on your partner to be like, you are- Validate me. You validate me in every way, shape performance as you bring somebody else into this or some sort of outside force, that's going to take everything away from my importance. I just got a text from my friend who is not in the lifestyle. Uh Uh-huh. This was, I'm like a Jedi Knight. And he is with this girl. And he said, my girl finally said that she wants to have a threesome Mm -hmm. with her girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. She said to me, oh, you have to wear a condom though with her. He's like, how do you do that? Like, do you use it on both? Do you not use it on both? It's a weird thing. No, you do not use it on both. You just have to select certain times. And if you need another one, you you repackage. (laughs) You do. (laughs) Yeah. I said, but for some women, there is a barrier of intimacy there. The condom acts as you are a little more intimate with me than you are with her uh-huh. by wearing that condom. Because he was like, I cannot fuck on a condom. I'd rather watch TV. Yeah, that sounds like you. And <laughs> it's so hard. It's I said, hard. Well, first of all, tell them that. Yeah. You know, tell them that. He immediately texted her. It, this has just happened before we, we started recording. And he said, that was it. It was an intimacy. No way. It was an intimacy issue. That thing with feeling like you are the most special is sort of connected to us, right? It's not the other person. All right, so you shut down. You go back into your cave. But he said it was only for a couple of years. So I'm yeah. curious how what drew him out of the cave again. Well, that's what I was just about to ask him. Oh. I wasn't about to end the interview. No. <laughs> You know, you come out of the cave, you test the waters, you talk about it again. There, there's a, a response that's a little different, maybe, maybe, and you cling on to that for a little while, and then it comes back down to no again. And it was really like that until 2018. Oh, this is where we come into the picture. All right, so I'm going to fast forward just a little bit here. Are you still reading the forums about Desire? Yes. Are you still peeking on there? Very, very privately, but yeah. Did she ever read any of those stories? She read a couple of them. You know, it was again, on again and off again, I think for her, where mm-hmm. it sounded interesting. And then I think when she really dug into who she was, I just don't think that the, the resort or the, the the lifestyle in general or the people who are in it were compatible with her views of the world. Now, I believe that there has to be people out there who are like, you know what? I have no problem with your lifestyle. And we've met these people. I have no problem with your lifestyle. Lauren, the fact that you are a whore does not affect me at all. (laughs) Thumbs up to you. I just do not have the time or the energy or really the interest to have sex with other people. Just don't. So good luck. Have fun. But yeah. they love desire. Yeah, I don't care about desire. Oh, so or not desire, but they love going to lifestyle things. Right. Was she a person that was open to sexuality? And it was, you kind of both had troubled childhoods. I, I don't really want to go into that so much. Was she a sexual person to begin with? Were you behind the eight ball as soon as you started? I, I think there was always a attention there as it related to intimacy. You know, that was a big focus in a lot of our counseling. So, so yeah, there, there wasn't necessarily a fun place to find playtime um, that was extremely comfortable, extremely relaxed. There was always some sense of tension in there. You know, we'd have stretches where it would be okay, but there was just other things within the relationship that would cause tension to reside and innocuous things like not picking up or not cleaning or those types of things that would spill over into the bedroom. If Lauren doesn't clean, she doesn't get the cock. That's the rule in this house. In fact, while I'm doing this interview, if you could straighten up in here a little bit, that would be good. <laughs> Is this about the time? You find us. August 2019. All right. So this is what I'm picturing. You go on, you log on, whatever. You're in those forums. You see our names pop up. When you finally find us, it was raining. It was dreary. (laughs) And then the sky opens up and a beam of sunlight comes through your front window, just lands straight on your crotch. And you go, this is who I need to reach out to. Then what? You started, I guess, listening to the podcast, right? Yeah, I, I did a Google search. It was we were kind of at odds. We had a, a pretty bad blowout. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she headed out to uh, go with some friends for for a week, and I stayed home and uh, did some googling. Did just did some. What am I really? Is is what I was trying to do. And through a Google search, I found Room Seventy Seven. Your names rung a bell, Richard and Lauren, just because I had read the reviews on the on the Desire forum and just started listening. Just when I immediately took a 
away was from your story in the intro about selling everything, moving down to Mexico. It, it was really the first time that I felt okay in feeling what I felt. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I've said thank you a million times and I can say it a million times again. It really was at a super low point in my life, but just listening to the banter, the playfulness, and and it's not necessarily what y'all did is what I need to go and do, but it's just the freedom to be able to express exactly what's on my mind and not have that judged or characterized the way it was. You know what I mean? Your podcast just gave me the ability to feel okay with what I was doing. Right. And I think that is one of the things that podcasts do, good books do, not as well as hearing a voice, but I think it is one of those things where people go through life and they feel like, oh, I'm not an insane person. Yeah. I equate this to turn of the century, being gay. You got to imagine that a person is living inside of uh, craziness, right? Yeah. In their brain. Yeah. If I'm in Downton Abbey and I like penis, I don't know what to do, right? There's no internet. There's, <laughs> in fact, well, there's certainly not going to be any books about it. No. Yeah. No. And there's, you know, there's layers and layers of clothing that makes everything way more difficult in yeah. that era. That yeah. has nothing to do with this. I sort of equate it to that, that there is a part of people who feel like, how do I relate to anyone in this town? Do you live in a small town? Uh, oh. m- medium size. I wouldn't say small. Small, it's not huge, but it doesn't matter. It'll fit in my sentence. How do I live in this medium sized town? <laughs> there you go. I can make anything work. So it does bring a sense of normalcy if you relate to the people that you're listening to. And that's sort of what you emailed us was like, hey, I need to write this because you made me feel better, essentially. Yeah. And I want to write my thoughts down. It only took you more than a year to get on the podcast. So you're welcome for that. <laughs> You've been in the inbox ever since. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I read that note that I sent to you guys every now and again, you know, and just because since that time, since I wrote that initial email, we did go through a lot of the council. So like, and uh, I did bring up your podcast. I did bring up the resort. I did bring up a lot of those things to the council. Yeah. And you told me that the, the, the counselor had a sort of term for the, I think the hotel, right? It was like a camp or something. You got to imagine the air quotes being made as, as the phrase was said, but yeah. the camp. That seems supportive. She probably wrote that book. What were things that you did besides telling her to read it or listen to the podcast? I know you told her to listen to the podcast and she was sort of willing to meet us at one point. Yeah. What were things that you feel like that you tried that were successful? I think I got to be careful here in how we're going to define success. All right. So that interview ran really long. It's about another 15 minutes long. We're going to throw that up on Patreon because this episode got too long. Told you way too much stuff going on. (laughs) It's about winding down for us now. Is it time for wine? No. Uh, do you remember when we used to RV? We had an RV and we used to go around the country and just fuck off. Yes. Fun time in our lives. One right? of my favorites, actually. Yeah. Brenna and Brian of Front Porch Swingers, they have a giant bus now. Yes. That's with altplayground.com. And they're taking this bus. They're going to go all around the country in an RV, they're going to spread happiness and love to sex positive people all around the country. So, it sounds like a blast. Yeah. So they're going to do like giveaways and events and, and a lot more. So go to All Playground social media to check that out. All Playground now, by the way, three ninety nine dollars if you want to try it out for three days. It's a great way to just dip your toes in if you want to, right? There you go. It's like, it cost me nothing but three ninety nine and a little bit of my dignity. <laughs> That's it. I just gave up a few nudes and three ninety nine. That's not or or best case scenario, you're like, I just had the best sex of my life and cost me three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. I love it. Low commitment. It's That's low what... risk, is yeah. what it is. <laughs> So try it out if you want to meet sex positive people all across the country. They're growing big and fast, uh, like my waistline. (laughs) So moving on, Lauren, to our lovely Patreons, the people that I love most. Do you want to know why? Why is that? Because now we are basically homeless and unemployed at this point. So again, we want to do a shout out for the new Patreons that joined up. We appreciate it. I'm going to sing this again. In the form of Ice you, Ice Baby. You're, you're going to do something very, very special. Yeah, because okay? it's special. This is a rap that you wrote by yourself, original song, 
original lyrics. Yeah. Um, you wrote this. If it sounds familiar uh-huh. at all, then sue us. Right. I believe Vanilla Ice has already been sued for this. <laughs> So I I think double jeopardy is in place here. That's how it works. I I have a law degree now. You can't sue me for stealing someone's music that they already stole. Lauren, who are our new Patreons? All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. We are back with some brand new patrons. Aaron, Adrian and Riley, Dan and Deanna, JJ and Molly. Will it ever stop? Probably so. Turn it up for Periac. Oh, to the extremes, Kim and Argyle. Light it up, Kyra Doc and Darren. Dan, Colorado crew. We're killing your ears like a poisonous mushroom. Carrie, Takashio, Shaki, Genevieve and Jody. Love it or leave it. You can with not eats. Lift and sleep, love the K and K. If there was a laugh, you know I got it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves in ice. Oh, honey. <laughs> you oh. did it. You did it again. Yeah, stop it. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, first of all, I never knew that you had this kind of gift inside of you. It's a rap random supporter's you, name. Usually, I am the only gift that is inside of you. But now I know there are two. If that is not worth the Patreon money to those, <laughs> then I want them to leave. Get out. You don't deserve Lauren. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was absolutely oh, amazing. Yeah, we love you guys. I liked uh, watching you work on that. That was that was fun. Yeah. Uh, nice work. Thank you. I enjoy it. Now I need you to get back to work because we have this party in I think three days. Flirty down and dirty third first annual. Flirty, first third annual. The first third annual. Yeah. Flirty down and dirty. For details, go to our website. Yeah, go to uh, room seventy seven life forward slash life of the party. I haven't posted it yet. All I right. Well, we'll get it up there we'll get everybody information and they can come to the next one yes because this one was sold out immediately it was sold out before we even posted it oversold actually and we almost got another house that's a whole story for a whole nother podcast <laughs> uh, meanwhile last but definitely not least what are you addicted to this month i'm addicted to grape trident i guess because i'm quitting the nicorette and uh-huh. i just tried every flavor of trident that there is and awesome you are only off the gum because we've been exiled and we can no longer get our shipments of Nicorette. I know. So thanks to that, I am addicted to smoking again. So <laughs> awesome. No Nicorette means I go back to smoking. So no. I'm glad everyone wants me to die. <laughs> It's fine. Yes. No ownership for your actions. That's what exactly. It's not my fault. <laughs> if I don't have Nicorette, there's only a, a, one other way to get it. Yep. I am addicted to disco lights. Because of the flirty down and dirty, I went out and bought all these lights <laughs> so that we can dance and have blinky lights. Yes. I'm obsessed with them. I want a disco. I want my own disco. I is know. basically what I want. I literally was having to give the guy like some side talk and be like, listen, this is our first party. He's going to want everything here. We're going to stay away from the soundboard, okay? Just show him, like, some stuff. And he's like, and these are moving heads with lasers? And you're like, yes, please. Yes, I will take everything. (laughs) I want that. In fact, how much to hold the party in your store? (laughs) I just... I will just come here. This is like a, a guitar center, yeah. but in Mexico. and it's- Yeah, it was amazing. His name was Diego, and it was uh, Electronica Gonzalez. He was super helpful. He so really great. helped me. But, and now we're going to have wonderful lights for the party. All right. Speaking of addiction, tell them about Bikini Addiction. Bikiniaddiction.com. And support us by buying your bikinis there. Use the promo code ROOM77. Get 10% off and free shipping in the U.S. And if you want to see her in those bikinis, make sure to go over to social media and check it out. All right, Lauren, I got to go. But one thing. Yes. Word to your mother. (laughs) No, seriously, word to her because I haven't heard from her in a while and I'm getting really, really concerned. I need to reach out to her, I think. Let's not get into this now. (laughs) Word to your mother. (laughs) And that about does it for us. For more information, visit us at room77life.com. Thanks for stopping by Room 77. We had a blast. Now get your clothes and get out.